Once a fighting game character makes their debut, they usually stick around in that fighting game series, even when they're a vampire or a panda bear or utterly ridiculous, not naming any names, Dampierre. <laughs> Some characters, however, prove to be so weird, unpopular, or tangled up in licensing issues that they make one appearance and are never seen again. Here are seven of our favourite one-shot fighting game characters who were never invited back for round two. Gon is a small orange dinosaur who starred in a manga series about his adventures bullying other dinosaurs and farting on things. He's also a participant in the third King of Iron Fist tournament for reasons that I'm not sure even he understands. I mean, usually a character's story ending gives us some idea of their motivation. Maybe we'll find a clue there. Well, that clears that up. Anyway, we'll just have to assume that Gon was there on important business. Important orange dinosaur business. He's surprisingly effective for a three-foot dino with matchstick arms thanks to his various tail attacks, fireballs, and one move in particular known as Gone with the Wind. Gone was not invited to participate in future King of Iron Fist tournaments for licensing reasons, according to Tekken's producers, but I think we all know the real reason. Street Fighter 3's various iterations are full of weird characters who never reappeared in the Street Fighter series, from Iori tribute act Remy, to Oro, the hermit will fight you with one arm tied behind his back, literally, to mask-wearing trench coat aficionado Q, to whatever 12 is. Are you ready? The weirdest as far as we're concerned though is Necro, the gangly, electro-limbed Russian who looks a bit like they found something living at the bottom of the ocean and stuffed it into some PVC bondage pants. Necro was experimented on by the Illuminati, but instead of using this experience to start his own conspiracy theory YouTube channel, he instead used his newly stretchy limbs and electric powers to travel the world, kicking people in the face. On his travels, he's accompanied by Effie, his girlfriend who shares his passion for impromptu opera. You win! <laughs> Alright, that's cool! Is it disembodied announcer voice? I'll take your word for it. Street Fighter 3 was to be Necro's only appearance in the series, although he does pop up in the background of the spooky arena stage in Street Fighter 5, in keeping with his role as the weirdest Street Fighter character ever. Alright, point taken. <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes included some of the most awesome characters from both companies' halls of fame, including such legendary fighters as Akuma, Captain America, Spider-Man, Morrigan, and Wolverine. It also, for some reason, included a Mingo, a sort of fat cactus man dressed like a frat boy on Cinco de Mayo. According to Amingo's backstory, he is trying to stop a bad wind that's sweeping the land, destroying all plant life it comes into contact with. Maybe speak to Gon about that. Despite being a fragile succulent, Amingo is pretty handy in a fight. He can change the shape of his body, turning his limbs into drills or becoming a giant onion, and he can summon thorny vines from the ground and send out little plants to launch his enemies into the sky, so he can, wow, swallow them whole. Why you gotta take it too far, Amingo? <laughs> Maracas are a nice touch, though. A rotund cactus man failed to light the public's imagination on fire, shocker, and so Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was Amingo's only appearance in the MVC series. He did show up in a cameo on a poster in the Days of Future Past version of the Metro City stage in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, in which it's revealed that he died off-camera at some point. Also, they spelled his name wrong. Man, the full poochie treatment. Don't see many of them these days. You win! I wonder why I'm so powerful! Olkidan is a character that mysteriously hasn't appeared in any Soul games except for Soul Calibur 3. Then again, maybe it's not that much of a mystery as he's got an owl head and looks ridiculous. <laughs> Your cheap tricks won't work! See, the deal with this is that, having bested all his human opponents, Olkidan fought a great owl that was a messenger of the God of War. Probably not that one. Behold the power of the gods! You Drown win! In the depths of Hades. The Angry God then changed Olkidan's head into an owl head as a punishment, which confirms this God of War was not Kratos, because if it was, Olkidan's head would have just been turned into a smashed-in head. Olkidan is a master of every fighting style in the game, but it's a bit hard to take him seriously because he has an owl head and is weirdly adorable. Those who get in my way will die! Aww. I mean, sorry, yes, very intimidating, Olkidan. 
That was the last we saw of Olkadan in the Soul series, because I guess he's now too busy forcing people to learn fighting from him. You're so weird, Olkadan. I know. If there are none stronger, then I will just have to train yeah. one myself. <laughs> Hostile located. Get ready, fight! Dead or Alive 4 is set roughly in the present day, so you might well wonder what a Spartan II super soldier from the year 2552 is doing taking part in the Dead or Alive tournament. The answer has something to do with a time bubble and Spartan Nicole 458 waiting for it to collapse so she can go back to her own time. But for someone who's trying not to disrupt the past, she does an awful lot of punching people in the face. <laughs> That could be your great 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 granddad, Nicole. Think of the timeline! Remember also that Nicole is in Spartan battle armor, powerful enough to punch these other fighters' heads clean off their shoulders. Winner! And that is how you hit like a girl. Maybe that's the reason she didn't return in Dead or Alive 5, or turn up to sunbathe and play volleyball in the Extreme series. Though I would love to see the cutscene of her trying to climb into a hammock and uprooting both trees supporting it due to her Mjolnir armor weighing half a ton. The best thing about Spartan 458 is that she is officially recognized as canon within the Halo universe, which means that Dead or Alive 4 is also canon within the Halo universe, and therefore Zack's ending is canon within the Halo universe. Look forward to the spin-off novel about that. <laughs> Mike from the original Street Fighter is a boxer who bears more than a passing resemblance to Mike Tyson. Now, I know what you're thinking. Andy, that guy came back in Street Fighter 2. He's called Mike Bison, or M. Bison for short. They had to change his name to Balrog in the West so they didn't get sued. And that would have made sense were it not for the fact that Capcom has gone out of their way to make sure that you know that Mike and Balrog are different people. Okay, but along with another non-returning character from Street Fighter 1, Joe, Mike is one of the two people in the Street Fighter 2 intro, right? The guy's fighting in front of someone's office for some reason? No, because Capcom has gone out of their way to make sure that you know that those are two other people called Max and Scott. So what gives? Why did Mike get unceremoniously dumped from the series after just one game, when other characters like Gen, Birdie and Eagle got to return for more games? Is it because Capcom were worried about lawsuits from Mike Tyson? Because if so, making a new character for Street Fighter 2 who's a gap-toothed American boxer called Mike Bison is maybe not the best way to deal with that, guys. Reiko defeated the Emperor and claimed his helmet. As he placed it on his head, his body fused with it, transforming him into a warlord of unprecedented savagery. A special mention here for a special Mortal Kombat dropout, because yes, technically Reiko was in two Mortal Kombat games, but I'm not counting Mortal Kombat Armageddon because everyone was in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and following that game, he was dropped quicker than someone getting uppercutted into the pit. <laughs> Reiko is what you get when you need to create a Mortal Kombat character in a hurry, but you're not allowed to just recolor Sub-Zero again because those were the last four character designs you submitted. Instead, you throw together some bits from the box-marked ninja, give him some eye makeup and fatalities in which he threw like 30 shurikens at someone, and whatever Looney Tunes nonsense is going on here. Reiko wins. Fatality. After his appearance in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Reiko vanished as a playable character from the series. Maybe he'll make a return when they finally run out of characters to change Sub-Zero to. I think we've got Tope, Goldenrod and Magenta still up for grabs, guys. There you have it, those were some of the would-be fighting game stars whose franchises moved on without them. Any favourites we missed? Let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more videos like this from outside Xbox. Thanks for watching!